Hello doodlies, I am back and in my last video I was using little pegs to hold some of my pieces together. So I did not my last video, my ticket video. And I said that if you wanted a tutorial I would make one. Well some of you asked, so here we are. You're going to need some small pegs for this. And for the first stage, a little container to hold some acrylic paint. Those little pegs, I've got the links for everything in my Amazon link below. Those are, I think, the 3.5 centimeter pegs so they're the medium size not the many many pegs and i think you get like a pack of 100 for under five pounds on amazon okay you're going to take some acrylic paint and you're going to water it down to this consistency so i've did like three drops of paint there two of the brown one of the black and half a cup of water and this is just to, so we can stain the pegs the color of your desired choice this doesn't need to be brown you can make them green you can make them pink you can make them any color you're going to need a paper towel and a pair of tweezers so to stain our pegs this is the most simple thing ever because these are um, unfinished natural wooden pegs you literally can dump them in watered down acrylic paint water and it acts as a stain now depending how dark you want this make sure you dip all sides i like to just roll it around in there turn it over and then put it straight on the paper towel it'll soak up any excess and they'll dry really fast if you want them to be a darker color let your pegs completely dry and then dump them again and let them dry as you can see here this is what it looked like after two dunkings in the paint and let them dry soaks in you can still see the wood grain and they look cute now the only part is the inside of the peg will always have a little white spot where they were closed you can open them up and dunk them back in again if you feel like it but i don't care you don't really see that bit okay so for the embellishment there's a few ways that you can do this you can use thick card images like from packaging you could cut out fussy cut out your little images you can do it with um, stickers you could stick your little stickers onto thick card stock i'm looking for a bit of card and once again you would then once you stick your stickers on fussy cut you just want something with a little bit of thickness to it that can handle a varnish and make the 3d effect but i actually use laser cut wooden shapes you can get these everywhere amazon temu aliexpress ebay like you just put in laser cut wooden shapes and these come in many different sizes and uh, you can even get them in hobby shops those ones with the little holes are from a craft kit from hobby craft now decorate these in any way you see fit i use acrylic paint and i'm showing you here this is actually um, ones that i got in a little craft kit these are small wooden laser cuts but you can also use um, the wooden buttons that you get online as you can see from the little picture there you can type in printed wooden buttons on most websites and you will find a little array of really cute different shapes already pre-printed you don't even need to paint them yourself and some really adorable ones okay so we're going to be using uv resin today but there are other options i'm going to show you now uv resin that little thing in my hand is a uv light you would shine it over and hold it over but i actually have a nail uv light off to the side that i'm pointing at which i'm going to be using because i use uv resin a lot and uh, the jade diction one i think is about 12 pound for that little bottle but you can buy craft glaze which is a multi-dimensional varnish you don't need any uv light it is uh, 3d and there's also mod podge mod podge sorry does a multi-dimensional glaze as well which i think it's called multi magic or something today i'm using my three in one glue this works really well for adhering wood to wood but you can use wood glue super glue or any strong glue that you have and you're going to glue on your pegs above and below where the little wire on the front is that is going to be your guide for the center of where your item goes and this will enable you to leave enough space on the peg still to use the peg with your fingers being able to open and close it without pressing onto your little image now make sure your little images are sized in a like in proportion to your pegs you can buy different size pegs if you can't get something small enough buy bigger pegs i mean this works with any size of pegs 
okay and you're just going to position your little images directly over the wire and that is kind of your guide for its center point okay i haven't done the dots on these toadstools yet because i had been waiting on them drying to do this video so i'm going to paint the dots on after i've glued them in place line your pegs up together in a row so you can make sure that you've got them all centralized and like they look nice together you are making a set after all okay so i'm going to paint my little dots on here i'm just using acrylic paint acrylic paint is great for any kind of painting on wood and it's just a cheap brand from Amazon. I'm using a paintbrush handle to put on the little dots there. You don't really need to see me painting toadstools because whatever it is that you decide to put on your pegs, that's kind of the point of this rather than watching me paint something. But you know, I hadn't finished them, so here we go. Now, if you do paint any little wooden things, be sure to leave them overnight to make sure they're thoroughly dry because if there's any moisture whatsoever left in your little wooden pieces, it will react with your resin over time and it'll ruin your little pegs. So once I've done these little dots, I'm going to leave them for a few hours. And I use these little pegs for so much stuff. I use them for holding papers together when I'm cutting. I use them for putting little memos up. On, I've got a little string above my desk when I'm needing inspiration. Okay, so once these are completely done, I'm going to move them to the side. I'm just going to show you some examples of what else you can use. And um, these are buttons. Oh, by the way, if you want a tutorial for this jar, <clears throat> let me know. I make storage and weird things out of random everyday objects. And um, I'm showing you here some buttons. And ones would look really cute if you had some really cute patterned buttons. You could do your pegs any coloured. You could put some lace or ribbon behind them. Make it like a scrapbook theme of decorating your little pegs. Basically think of that little area where the wire, wire is as your glue on spot. I've got some paper flowers here. You could do some paper embellishments that you could glue on there to suit your style. You could glue on some, I don't know, little the little snippets when you make the little bundles with fabric and paper make a tiny little cluster and then glue that on that would look super cute but you can also use things that you find in nature this pine cone's a little bit big for that peg but you know that would be something cute but you can also buy resin flat backs i have tons of resin flat backs and um, i'm just going to pull one out to show you these come already pre to find these you just type in resin flat backs on amazon aliexpress whatever and you'll find millions of them the only thing you really need to think about is the size of the, the items that you buy in relation to the size of your pegs you want it to be enough space that you can still grab the top of your peg i'm showing you here this resin flat back is really cute now that would go really cool on one of my bigger pegs i'm just going to go and retrieve one so I, I would probably make a little woodland themed peg for this little deer i love these deers i've had them for a long time i just never know what i'm going to use them for but it needs something behind it so you could for example make a little see i've started painting that blue for some reason i don't know i found it in my stash and i was like why is it blue so you could put something behind a resin flat back you could, for example a felt flower that would look pretty cute i mean these are the kind of things that in your craft room you could have a little string across your craft room desk with your little pegs and you could just hang up little inspiration or favorite pieces i love little pegs like this and yes i did stick my finger in the paint i should really clean off my desk but you know i do these things and then i think about the after and this little jar toadstool i have a set of three of these i made these from just regular food storage jars so if you want to watch a tutorial on that let me know it is super super simple and it was really inexpensive to get the supplies needed Okay, so I went and had a shower and got ready and these were completely dry by the time I came out. So if you were using craft glaze, you would do your toadstool and both parts of your peg and put them aside and leave them overnight to dry and you would be done. But I'm using UV resin and UV resin can be a bit temperamental. So I like to do parts at a time. I like to do the toadstool first. Do you want to put out just a little 
blob and use the nozzle to spread it all the way to the edges now if you have never used uv resin before it is kind of self doming a little bit thick but it still has a tendency to run off the sides if you use too much you want to avoid that so put a little tiny bit at a time and then once you've covered the whole thing and it's got a slight dome on it you would use your lamp like that and hold it over it for a few minutes but i'm putting it in a nail light so i am putting it to the side in my little nail light and you would cover all four of your little toadstool pegs i'm just showing you here that yeah there's a couple of bubbles before you put it in you can run a lighter over it and it will pop any surface bubbles if you catch them first before you put them in the light they, they will have no blemishes on the top of your resin so yeah you want to just once again put a little blob on the and then use the nozzle to push it out to the edges I use UV resin in many things but I'm also a resin artist if you go look at my other videos I've done quite a lot of resin videos that was my main job for a long time when I ran an online store okay this um, is actually my favorite UV resin this J Diction one there's a lot of um, UV resins on Amazon and it took me a long time trying many of them to find one that I like because some of them stay quite sticky the J Diction one as you can see is super shiny and really hard wearing and plus it's really quick to cure. Now I'm showing you here the point of leaving the little area for your pegs is so when you use your pegs you've got a space for your thumb and finger without having to press on your little image. Okay so once they're in the UV lamp I leave them in there for about 20 minutes normally over leave them in just to be sure they'll come out nice and shiny and hard so that's when you would go back and do the top and bottom areas of a peg now this will not only keep your peg nice and durable and clean it will also act as extra glue to keep your little embellishment in place by adhering it even more firmly to your peg so definitely do this step if you need a little tool to push the resin in against the edges then uh, you can use a little pokey tool or just a little metal sp spatula they're really easy to clean off just take a baby wipe to them okay so i'm putting them in my lamp and as you can see in my reflection i really need to get a mat for this desk and i'm going to leave them in there for a good little while and we'll leave them once i've done all of these edges i usually leave uv resin in for like half an hour as a final cure and that just enables every single part of that uv resin gets cured solid and hard and there'll be no sticky residue or tackiness i mean it doesn't really need it with this resin i just like to over cure just to be sure and i've never had any problems with this resin so i'll do all four and i stick them in the lamp okay so this resin i'll leave a link for it in my amazon links below like i said it's about 12 pound for that bottle if you do decide to do any resin crafts i use it in a lot of paper crafts so you know you don't need to use it just to do things like this and this is how they turned out after half an hour in the lamp as you can see super shiny super cute they look adorable use them to clip things together or even just to keep little piles of your stash that you haven't used together yet they also make really good gifts for someone that has a theme that they like for example me i'm a toadstool lover so if someone gifted me these little four pegs i would be thrilled yes the paint is still getting on my hands so the original ones i did and the other ones the original ones were actually colored in with marker pens not paint so you can see the difference between them it's a little more shading going on on the little ones but yeah there you go i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i'll catch you in the next one <laughs>